welcome you all to session one of the conference. I would request Professor Dr. Ishwara Bhatt to kindly deliver his keynote address on role of structuralism in constitutional interpretation. Professor Sudhish Bhatt, esteemed jurist, faculty members, and uh, all the participants in this uh, seminar on uh, recent trends in our constitutional law. When we discuss about the recent trends, it's uh, inevitable to know about uh, the important uh, method of interpretation that's uh, adopted in India, that is uh, structuralism. Supreme Court has uh, not used the word uh, structuralism in any of uh, the judgments. But uh, uh, it has uh, applied the essential principles relating to structuralism. The idea of structuralism was uh, developed in uh, America by some, by some uh, eminent scholars like uh, Charles Black, then uh, Professor Lawrence uh, Tribe, and uh, other scholars. Uh, by structuralism, what we mean is that when we understand uh, any constitution or a legislation or any legal document, we have to understand the structure of uh, that uh, document, structure of uh, that uh, charter or uh, stru uh, structure of uh, that uh, constitution, etc. See, it is uh, possible to derive meaning either from words or from a silence, or from a relations. Relations are a very important resources of being. That is why, relation between a one structure and another structure, or a relation within the structure, relation between a one word and another word, relation between a one article and another article, relation between a one part and another part, relation between a preamble and a some other part and relation between one concept and another concept. All these types of relations are very useful resources of meaning. It is only by using these types of relations in a very creative manner that Indian constitutional jurisprudence got developed and reached the heights because of that approach. Whether it is a Keshwananda case or a Maneka case, or various other cases, uh, Swami or other cases, landmark cases have used structuralism as a method of interpretation or they have used the structure or they have used the relations among various uh, provisions of the constitution or various uh, uh, articles or uh, various, uh, various uh, parts. What is uh, structuralism about this uh, the Oxford Dictionary gives a one meaning. It is a method of analyzing a subject, for example, social science, language or literature, which concentrates on the structure of a system, structure of a system, and the relations between its elements, rather than on individual elements themselves. Instead of focusing on individual elements, which are forming particular structure. The interpreter will look into the whole system and uh, uh, whole of uh, that structure. Structuralism means uh, that kind of a thing. Uh, it, it uh, focuses on uh, the structure as a whole. See, a constitution has a structure. It starts with the preamble. Preamble uh, runs uh, uh, before the constitution and it reflects uh, the entire features of uh, the constitution, the prime goals and uh, values enshrined in the constitution. Then uh, there are various uh, parts, part relating to union, part relating to citizenship, part relating to fundamental rights, directives, executive, then uh, judiciary, legislature, uh, then uh, uh, federalism, uh, relation between uh, central government to state government, then uh, uh, so many things and uh, we come across uh, uh, 
new additions which also constitute the, the part of the structure because uh, today when we look into the constitution we have to take into consideration the various additions that have been made there are uh, new players of the constitution game like a uh, panchayat raj or uh, municipalities nagar palikas cooperative societies then uh, political parties are also players of constitutional game after uh, the introduction of uh, this uh, anti defection law by 52nd constitutional amendment the uh, number of uh, uh, new players of a constitutional game have uh, emerged see it is not only in the constitution but uh, even in law literature or uh, in a, any of uh, the things uh, that uh, we come across we find structure human body has a structure skeletal structure that uh, provides a shape then a uh, uh, flesh and blood provides a uh, uh, an uh, uh, additional factor to the human body uh, then of course uh, uh, various uh, systems are there digestive system uh, then a reproductive system then a uh, uh, of course a nervous system circulatory system all these systems are interrelated all these systems are interrelated because uh, when uh, we speak about uh, the structure of a human body we have to take into consideration the wholeness of it it is not a mere sense organ it is not a mere uh, uh, say limbs or uh, hand uh, leg or uh, other, other uh, uh, parts of fingers or other parts of the body uh, it is a, a totality that is to be taken into consideration that is uh, the holistic uh, uh, thing that is to be taken into account human personality is a uh, not just a physical existence but uh, the intellectual ability of that individual uh, what type of contribution he has made what type of uh, uh, intellectual uh, uh, achievements that he has uh, attained all these uh, factors uh, count similarly when we look at building building has structure pillars uh, doors uh, then uh, walls uh, then uh, uh, so many other uh, things which uh, give a shape to that uh, building that is uh, the structure mother earth has uh, the ecological structure and uh, uh, various uh, relations between uh, uh, the elements of uh, environment that is to be taken into consideration so is the solar system where a uh, number of uh, planets number of uh, uh, stellar uh, stellar objectives they are interrelated with the gravitational force see a society has a structure uh, it is not a, just a heap of a human masses organized uh, section of uh, the whole society means that there is a interrelated existence of uh, that uh, population in a particular area the people as a whole will be having that kind of uh, coherent relations and uh, that gives rise to structure about the structure of a society every eminent uh, thinker alur venkatra uh, who was uh, the uh, key person who fought for a uh, unification of karnataka he gives one explanation about structure the, the structure of society he according to him there are three layered structure in a society one is a value structure value structure consists of uh, the higher principles like uh, equality liberty justice harmony uh, welfare and happiness all these uh, constitute uh, the value structure and then comes a uh, intellectual structure there is a morality customs literature art architecture uh, sculpture uh, law law is also part of that intellectual structure so intellectual structure there is uh, the second layer third layer is the infrastructure infrastructure there is a uh, land not mere uh, soil but a uh, whole of environment uh, the whole some environment that is the thing that is contemplated when we speak about the land the population 
population uh, it, uh, once again it is uh, not uh, uh, a mass of human persons but uh, persons uh, uh, i mean uh, all human beings uh, who are uh, educated who are uh, rightly thinking who are participating and who are uh, determined to do some positive things in the society that is the population aristotle and others uh, spoke or they thought about uh, that kind of a population where uh, people used to participate and uh, uh, meaningfully uh, used to add to the success of uh, that uh, society that is a population uh, that is a educated uh, well meaning and uh, uh, participative type of uh, people that is a uh, the that is one of uh, the infrastructure then uh, organized the government there is also infrastructure rule of law maintenance of rule of law and uh, other things uh, maintenance of uh, security and order then uh, organized strength on the part of uh, people uh, which uh, can be called as a sovereignty see all these infrastructures are there and according to alur vegatra the value structure would influence both the uh, intellectual structure and and infrastructure there is a equality liberty fraternity and uh, all those ideals harmony etc this will influence the intellectual structure as well as the infrastructure if there is any aberration in intellectual structure say uh, there is a, some seditious speech or a communal disharmony or a various other types of uh, aberrations or uh, in the uh, level of a population suppose uh, there are some aberrations for example uh, uh, people uh, resort to uh, choice of gender in a reproduction because of which uh, the human population uh, gets skewed the men population is uh, higher than uh, the female population because of uh, the planned uh, parenthood or such a thing see these types of aberrations are to be set right by the higher values uh, thus uh, in a, a social structure there are uh, such a uh, inbuilt relations uh, within the society which will uh, set right uh, some of the aberrations thus uh, when we speak about the structure we have to think about uh, these types of things uh, see structuralism is a uh, a philosophical approach uh, initiated by one uh, anthropologist called uh, levi strauss a french uh, philosopher french uh, anthropologist uh, see until that time and even afterwards uh, there was uh, the idea of uh, existentialism jean paul sartre was uh, an existentialist uh, philosopher and he believed that the uh, human beings uh, shape the world of uh, the europe they are not uh, dependent upon the external factors of the world for uh, their own individual actions uh, thus uh, each person exists on the basis of uh, his own choice and uh, his uh, choice is uh, not uh, predetermined by the world there is his idea levi strauss strongly contested that idea and pointed out that a society uh, is a uh, reciprocally related within the society there is a reciprocal relation because uh, the uh, marital relations or uh, various other uh, relations are such that through reciprocal relation a society is uh, constituted it is not possible to have a society where uh, incest could be the basis for a uh, uh, continuation of uh, the population uh, that is why he considered that uh, the structure of uh, the society is uh, based upon a relations it is uh, the relation between various uh, human beings various uh, classes that gives rise to social solidarity and uh, we cannot uh, just depend upon our own choices to exist on the basis of one's own choice is uh, not a uh, 
uh, a full fledged one, it is not a self sufficient one, and one has to depend upon uh, others. See, Karl Marx also thought about the structure. Uh, he considered that a uh, legal system is a superstructure built upon the economic structure. Now, suppose that it is an exploitative society. The bourgeois establishes a legal system which uh, favors uh, and continues uh, that type of exploitation. But uh, when a working class unite and uh, they dismantle bourgeois regime and establish uh, their own regime, then of course uh, the legal system is uh, established on the basis of a new set of uh, structure and uh, the work structure is uh, the basis for uh, that uh, new legal system and when a uh, perfect equality is attained there is uh, no scope for a uh, state, state simply withers away. You see, uh, this uh, structure is uh, something which is uh, common and uh, which is uh, uh, something uh, uh, which uh, can be found uh, everywhere and uh, in the interpretation of a uh, law also the proposition that each and every word that is used in the statute shall be given due consideration and uh, it should not be thought that the legislator had uh, not given importance to any of uh, the word or classes clauses see that particular approach uh, uh, is a uh, quite a uh, important approach and uh, uh, of course uh, this uh, idea that a statute shall be read as a whole and uh, uh, no part of the statute shall, shall be kept uh, redundant or useless or uh, non-operative. All the provisions of uh, the statute shall be given a due effect and due consideration. This is a uh, well accepted a principle in a common law and uh, of course uh, from the beginning of uh, the American constitution itself we come across use of uh, such a relations as a resource of being for example in a Matlock versus Maryland or even a prior to that Marbury versus Madison itself there we come across the relation between a judiciary and the uh, legislative process uh, when a, a legislation is uh, produced by a legislature, is it in accordance with the constitution or not? That is, to, that is going to be decided by the uh, judiciary. Of course, uh, American constitution has a distinct structure of its own. Each constitution has its own structure. See, it has a, a brief preamble, then a, a few articles are there, only six articles are there and uh, article 1 legislature, article 2 executive, article 3 judiciary. Thus uh, we can contemplate or we can visualize that uh, there is a theory of uh, separation of powers uh, which constitutes uh, one of uh, the important uh, feature of uh, the American constitution. That's why when uh, the executive goes wrong or when the legislature goes wrong Judiciary has to see to it that uh, those uh, legislative actions or executive actions which are uh, in violation of the constitution shall be uh, properly remedied and uh, uh, it should be set right. See, uh, in a Macron versus uh, Maryland, when uh, one of uh, the states enacted uh, a law imposing a tax on uh, uh, federal banks which uh, almost uh, obstructed the functioning of a uh, national bank and national economy also. Then of course uh, the Supreme Court interfered and the Supreme Court nullified that legislation. See, the reason for a nullification was that the legislature had a uh, I mean, the state legislature had enacted a law which obstructed the functioning of uh, the federal system itself. That's why 
it uh, goes against uh, the appropriate functioning of uh, the constitutional system because uh, federalism is one of uh, the important uh, feature of uh, the American constitution and when uh, that is going to be obstructed because of uh, the state legislative policy it is uh, essential to nullify that state legislative policy and uh, protect the uh, entirety or uh, wholeness of uh, the American constitution. That was the approach adopted in uh, that case. Then we come across uh, various uh, developments where uh, uh, civil war uh, uh, took place uh, over the question of uh, slavery and uh, there also uh, about uh, the constitutionality of uh, any I mean, specific legislation enact enacted by the federal government when a question was uh, raised the court uh, uh, examined all those issues and in a Dred Scott uh, uh, versus uh, Sanford the court uh, gave a judgment that uh, the federal legislation which uh, uh, allowed the escape of uh, slaves from a slave state to non-slave state would be resulting in manumission of uh, that uh, slave. That slave will be declared as a free person once he enters into a state where uh, slavery is uh, not practiced. When uh, that uh, progressive type of legislation was enacted, the judiciary nullified that legislation. Perhaps uh, the uh, uh, extra constitutional structure or uh, the social structure or the prejudice or uh, the uh, racial uh, uh, bias that was in the mind of uh, uh, Americans that had uh, uh, actually operating in uh, the majority judgment in that case. Uh, of course, uh, the structure of uh, the constitution was uh, not properly taken into consideration in that case, but uh, the aberration in the social system was uh, taken into consideration and that itself was uh, regarded as uh, the structure and uh, the court uh, provided that, that kind of remedy. But uh, against uh, this approach, uh, there was a revolt, uh, uh, there was a anti-slavery movement, Abraham Lincoln's uh, uh, movement uh, was uh, quite successful in uh, uh, restoring the unity of uh, the country and uh, 14th, uh, 13th and uh, 13th amendment abolished uh, the practice of slavery, 14th amendment extended uh, equality principle and uh, various other fundamental rights. Uh, see, each amendment in the American constitution is uh, having its own structure and uh, suppose uh, the structure of uh, that amendment is uh, not taken into consideration and uh, 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 it is not connected with the uh, other uh, amendments then it is uh, quite likely that uh, it will uh, cause uh, some kind of uh, uh, difficulty, some kind of aberration because uh, even after incorporation of the 14th amendment uh, nationalizing the Bill of Rights or, or uh, saying that uh, the Bill of Rights uh, shall be available to uh, available against uh, all the states that uh, the rights and the privileges of US citizens uh, shall be extended against uh, all the states this is the essential uh, principle underlying the 14th amendment but uh, when uh, that mandate was uh, not taken into consideration in, a, so in a, some of the cases for example uh, in a civil rights case let's see what's for those and, and various other cases very restrictive approach was adopted the true essence underlying uh, those amendments were uh, not uh, taken into consideration that's, that's how what was a structural approach in a Marbury versus Madison or Maclock versus Maryland was uh, not extended and uh, a very restrictive and uh, hesitant approach adopted by the judiciary had uh, resulted in non-application of uh, structuralism and uh, American constitution uh, suffered uh, heavily because of a uh, uh, deviation from that uh, structuralist approach. See, it was uh, 
uh, subsequently, by incorporating the, all the fundamental rights selectively, not in a bag and baggage manner, but selectively, one after the other, for uh, uh, several decades, that uh, the fundamental rights that are available against uh, the United States were now made available against uh, the states also. And uh, for that, American Supreme Court took almost a, a century, almost a century. Uh, of course, in the 1960s, the process was almost complete. There's a incorporation of uh, the fundamental rights against the states. And at that time, when a, a judgment was uh, delivered by the Supreme Court in a Carrington case, that uh, the state law which uh, imposed uh, some uh, disability upon uh, the soldiers to have domicile in that state was uh, unconstitutional because uh, it violated the right to equality. See, uh, the law had provided that the uh, military soldiers are not entitled to have residence in that state for the purpose of uh, getting voting right. For the purpose of getting voting right. Uh, yes, that was uh, the purpose with which uh, that law was enacted. The court uh, uh, considered that uh, this is a violation of right to equality. Because uh, between uh, soldiers and other uh, civilians, when a discrimination is made in relation to right of residence, there was a deviation from the principle of equality that, <coughs> that was the approach adopted. But uh, Professor Charles Black, in his uh, Douglas White lectures, commented that the judgment judgment's outcome was correct but but uh, the reason given for the judgment was wrong see differentiation between soldiers and civilians uh, could be made there is no difficulty about that there could be rational uh, classification also but here the state legislature had uh, no competence to enact a law which uh, obstructed the uh, mobility rights of our soldiers, how soldiers shall move or how soldiers shall settle their residence, about all those things, it is the federal government which has to decide, not the state government. If a state government obstructs the whole of the military activities, then it goes against the federalism itself. So, on the basis of a structure or on the basis of a relations, the court should have decided and uh, uh, determination on the basis of equality is uh, not appropriate and structuralism is uh, an appropriate approach. See here, he makes uh, this observation. Method of inference from the structures and relationships created by the constitution in all its parts or in uh, some principal part, that is uh, the uh, meaning of the term uh, uh, structuralism and uh, uh, solely relying on a particular textual passage alone and uh, deciding the whole case on that basis is not appropriate. It is essential that uh, the court should go beyond the textual passage. What is the purpose of the constitution? What is the structure of the constitution? How Federalism is uh, something uh, created through this uh, constitution in a uh, very careful manner and uh, between the central government and the state government, uh, what shall be relations, what are the powers of the uh, federal government, powers of a uh, state government and uh, how exactly those uh, relations are to be uh, identified and uh, properly understood. About all those things, uh, one has to look into.
a close and perpetual networking between textual and relational and structural modes of reasoning for the structure and the reasons concern are themselves created by the text and inference drawn from them must surely be controlled by the text uh, what he meant was that in understanding the structure of a, any constitutional system or any particular concept one has to look into the text text is the basis see uh, here on the basis of uh, uh, specific provisions of the constitution he was uh, developing a relations between a federal government and state government what shall be relation that can be understood by looking into the textual passage in other words structuralism is a something a built on the basis of a textualism itself now uh maneka gandhi case is uh, regarded as uh, the uh, excellent example of uh, this uh, structural uh, uh, interpretation article 14 19 20 21 golden triangle uh, used to be uh, construed in such a way that the procedural search by law shall be just and fair is uh, just fair and reasonable because of uh, the application of article 14 and article for article 19 no provision of uh, part 3 of the constitution is an island by itself each is uh, related with the other uh, fundamental right that is uh, that is the principle uh, evolved there so text is the basis uh, uh, even in uh, uh, that uh, progressive type of interpretation see when a uh, indian supreme court brought uh, the factor of dignity into right to life under article 21 by this integrated reading once again structuralism there also text is the basis and that brought a, a revolutionary change a big change see always a grafting of a words or a grafting of a so many propositions these are a, having their own a, a immense consequence that should be taken into consideration uh, honorable justice uh, mn mcgill in a a uh, portal case uh, makes one observation that uh, under each word there is a, a conceptual framework word is not mere word there is a, a conceptual framework behind the word so we have to take into consideration that fact and uh, this conceptual framework may sometimes change from a time to time when a conceptual framework changes then uh, but uh, the word remains the same then how exactly that conceptual framework framework is to be adjusted with that word about that uh, one should uh, think and one should uh, uh, apply the creative reasoning in a such a circumstance because a, a word is always a born in a world born in a world a social world because a language is a, a social product it is a produced by the human community and it is done with a purpose to communicate uh, some uh, thoughts uh, some ideas so uh, each uh, sentence has a structure because uh, see uh, verb objective subject and all those uh, things are there then only we say that uh, the sentence is a uh, complete because a sentence is a, a meaningful set of words and uh, a word is to be understood in the company of another word see no person shall be deprived of his uh, right to life or personal liberty except according to the procedure shall be law just uh, one or two lines see there uh the term life is to be understood along with the personal liberty deprival then a procedure established by law each and every word is uh, interlinked so keeping the company of uh, those words uh, the particular word is to be understood or it is to be interpreted uh, see within the word also there will be a structure for example the term dignity you know uh just as a case put us on me uh case case number 2 just as a uh dy chandrachud uh, makes analysis of this word uh dignity what is a dignity see dignity is a 
an expectation of a respect for one's self. This is a, a person's expectation from the society that he will be treated in a dignified manner. And uh, uh, treating the uh, society in a dignified manner, that is also part of a dignity. And uh, respecting oneself, that uh, I am uh, in possession of uh, all these uh, rights and uh, I have various uh, responsibilities uh, to perform. This is also a factor of dignity. So, dignity itself has uh, three factors. One is uh, towards oneself, that uh, uh, yes, I have to uh, live in a, an ideal manner. Uh, uh, see, I should not involve in uh, immorality or illegalities. But uh, I should uh, lead a noble life. This is a. Uh, uh, this actually brings a dignity to me. If a, uh, a criminal act or an immoral act brings a say disrespect, omission of all that, a string of all those things brings a respect to that individual. So towards oneself, that kind of a dignity. Then uh, towards uh, others. Uh, towards others or towards the society as a whole that is a dignity and expecting a dignity a, expecting respect from others is also factor of dignity thus uh, the term dignity is to be understood in a composite manner uh, having uh, all these uh, three components thus uh, in a matter relating to uh, say reproductive right or abortion or uh, uh, say uh, 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 suicide or uh, euthanasia or uh, various other issues like a uh, uh, death penalty etc the component of uh, dignity there is uh, all those three components of dignity are to be taken into consideration so the aspect of a structure enters uh, even to the world also See, uh, structuralism is uh, such that it uh, enters into each and every tissue of uh, the constitutional structure. Uh, see, between uh, one article and another article, between one part and another part, there will be such uh, relations. See, Lawrence uh, tribe explains about uh, structuralism in this way. Uh, he finds the answer. Uh, through structural inference because uh, a constitution has uh, patterns and premises, layout and logic, assumptions and uh, animating principles and uh, there are so many gaps. Uh, between words there are gaps. Uh, these gaps are to be filled up, uh, spaces are to be filled up and uh, structure provides uh, some guidance about uh, filling the gap. Structural analysis is appropriate not only in order to flesh out the contours and the content of federalism based limits on the national government or to fill in the elements of a separation of powers but also in order to give shape and substance to unenumerated rights. See, not only relating to central state relations or relations between the three organs of government legislature, executive and judiciary or intra-organ relations that is between a House of People and uh, Rajya Sabha, or a House of Commons and a House of Lords, or a Congress and a Senate. See, in those uh, uh, inter organ controls under a bicameral system, also we come across the application of uh, this uh, structural inferences. Uh, another scholar, Akil Reed Amar, he considers that. Uh, a constitution is to be read holistically and uh, overarching of uh, various uh, themes in the constitution is to be done. Overarching of uh, themes. See, so many themes are there. So many structures. Those uh, themes are based on uh, specific structures. For example, parliamentary form of a government. Parliamentary form of a government, there is a part of, it is a one, aspect, one uh, kind of a democracy that is connected with the, uh, say, human rights. See, it is essential to protect human rights. It is essential to uh, bring uh, social welfare and uh, 
bring a, a so many types of changes so that the people will be free from various types of exploitations. That's a parliamentary form of government has a that kind of a, a innate a purpose with which it has to operate, and this has a connection with the human rights. This has a connection with the welfare. Similarly, between a federalism and a Demo, uh, a democracy there is a relation. See, federalism means that uh, uh, with the division of powers, there is a kind of a responsibility because uh, always a uh, power divided is a uh, power controlled. Uh, whether it is a uh, the power between a legislature, executive, or judiciary, or a power divided between a central government and state government, always a uh, power there is a. Uh, divided or separated gets controlled because a judiciary has to identify whether the limits of our powers have been encroached or the limits of powers have been maintained etc. This overarching of those things can be found. For example, there to control the state policy, whole part 4 is relating to welfare and who is to execute that policy of welfare? Both the federal government and state government, because the term state is defined to mean union, executive, union parliament, state government, state legislature, local authorities and other authorities within the control of uh, government of India or uh, within the territory of India. So, the totality of uh, all these uh, power holders under Article 12 or under Article 35, they have this kind of responsibility. They have the responsibility of uh, protecting uh, part three of the, uh, I mean, uh, fundamental rights are guaranteed under part three of the constitution. And uh, social justice and welfare, these are objectives under uh, part four of the constitution. But uh, that is not the monopoly of uh, part four. Because in uh, part three also, there are so many provisions relating to social justice. There are so many provisions relating to people's welfare. That's uh, within part three, because of a juxtaposition of a uh, various types of provisions. The one provision providing for equality. The next provision providing for a special measures for a, a women, children or backward classes or a, a social and a, a educationally backward classes, scheduled caste, etc. So, there is a need to uh, provide for uh, both the equality clauses. That arises a competition between the two equality clauses. And uh, Mark Galantis' book, uh, Competing Equalities, there he points out how uh, there is a need for a balance between formal equality and substantial equality. See, here also we come across the uh, application of structuralism. And uh, when a uh, uh, right is a guaranteed or freedom is a guaranteed, along with it, uh, certain restrictions are also contemplated. And uh, through law, reasonable restrictions on a specific grounds uh, can be imposed under Article 19. Whether it is reasonable, whether it is uh, within the constitutional limits, about all those things, when an uh, analysis is uh, going to be made, the court uh, makes a resort to such a relations or a structural analysis. See, uh, that's why so many themes are to be interconnected. Uh, for example, uh, uh, Stephen Breyer in his uh, article, Why Federalism Matters? Then he points out, Federalism matters because uh, in order to protect the environment, in order to ensure uh, uh, economic unity of the nation, or in order to ensure uh, mobility of uh, the people throughout the country, Federalism matters. So, Federalism is a connection with the democracy, Federalism, the connection with the welfareism, all these matters count. See, federal government uh, provides a number of uh, 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 existences. Uh, there are so many centrally sponsored uh, schemes. Janani Suraksha Yojana or uh, uh, Sarva Shikshana Abhiyan, uh, then uh, Narega or uh, Health Program and so many other things. And we come across a uh, numerous programs where a perfect coordination between a federal government and state government, cooperation, 
that is very much essential now so also some state that does not implement the uh, welfare program at all janani suraksha yojana that's a each and every pregnant woman who is uh, falling below the poverty line is entitled to certain package of uh, assistance uh, from the government that is a simple uh, suraksha yojana but uh, in uh, some states because of a uh, negligence or uh, ignorance or uh, uh, say disinterest it is not at all implemented there is a uh, only 5% implementation and uh, the uh, whole of uh, the grant made by the central government uh, goes back to the central aid sector at the end of the year whereas in uh, some other states uh, so was a uh, in addition to central fund state government also provides a fund and uh, there is a 170% uh, implementation see uh, if in a federal system because of the enthusiasm of one state people are better and because of negligence on the part of the government people are poorer then it comes to the position that it is always lucky to be born in a particular state rather than in another state whether the position of an individual his human right his access to human right should be dependent upon this chance factor that he is born in madhya pradesh or he is born in kerala or he is in he is born in orissa if the uh, health factor or access to education or so many other things are dependent upon these factors then we find that such disparities arise because of a lack of coordination between one structure and another structure if federalism is properly supported by democracy or federalism is supported by various other systems and arrangements then or federalism supports the cause of welfare etc then of course the position will be better that's why what professor amar has said that there should be overarching of themes in the constitution that becomes a very much relevant because one has to go beyond all those facts see structuralism is a not that much referred to in a constitutional writings whether it is a basu or a chirwai or other scholars they do not refer to the word structuralism because they were thinking in a yes a traditional mode and they have their own set of ideas uh see professor st sate uh in his uh, uh, important article uh in a uh, uh one publication uh from positivism to structuralism makes a, a very good analysis of structuralism but uh, there also about the structuralism he has a, a very limited uh, definition see by structuralism what he meant was that a constitution is a interpreted liberally as a totality in the light of the spirit pervading it and the philosophy underlying of course the essential approach of structuralism is a liberal approach because a structuralism always a either controls the power or expands the liberty and provides a better scope for a realization of a human welfare you see it aims at uh, articulate the implicit nuances of the constitution and uh, gathering support from a uh, benjamin cardozo uh, that uh, a constitution shall accommodate to the future uh, he makes uh, this observation that uh, structuralism is a uh, always a result oriented and it is purposive it is a teleological so between a structuralism and a progressivism or structuralism and purposivism there is a close nexus according to professor sp sate but uh, sp sate uh, in spite of his uh, survey of uh, the whole of uh, the constitutional development related to structuralism that a uh, post question on the case has uh, brought a big change in the interpretation of the constitution because uh, 
by increasing a resort to application of structuralism see by positivism what he meant was that each article is a uh, interpreted in an isolated manner in an independent manner not related with the other rights or other parts of the constitution then uh, we do not get a, a fair result for example in the ak gopalan case by not reading article 21 along with article 19 the court failed to incorporate uh, the idea of uh, fairness and reasonableness within the procedure established by law and article 21 and uh, it required almost a uh, one and a half decade or two decades uh, to overrule that uh, yes the first two decades uh, can be considered as a, a period where uh, uh, experiment was done see uh, we find that uh, when uh, the court was applying structuralism in a matter relating to property right article 14 19 and 31 interrelated uh, uh, interpretation of uh, uh, those uh, three articles was done and uh, uh, how compensation shall be uh, just and uh, equivalent to market value about all those things uh, such a uh, developments took place then you know some cases relating to a criminal procedure equality principle was applied anwar ali sarkar case there that's a uh, although in a gopalan case there was a that a cold positivist approach there was also experiment in a application of structuralism in a other part similarly relating to theory of separation of powers in a ram jawai kapoor case we come across a Uh, an observation that uh, independent of uh, any legislation the executive has a uh, inherent executive power uh, to make uh, some uh, policy decisions but uh, when it uh, violates the individual right or a uh, uh, deviation from the existing law then there should be law there should be specific legislative authorization uh, otherwise uh, the executive has uh, that uh, power Uh, then a uh, inri delhi laws case there we come across a structural interpretation that uh, the the uh, law which uh, enables a uh, delegation of legislative power it should uh, contain essential legislative policy and it should uh, guide the way in which uh, the executive makes uh, rules or uh, bylaws etc and uh, there should be legislative control over uh, the uh, legislative i mean executive law making or executive rule making thus again theory of separation of powers was applied thus uh, uh, structuralism was uh, there even uh, uh, prior to keshavananda case or prior to uh, maneka gandhi case uh, see uh, charles black uh, he lamented about uh, absence of structuralism but the structuralism was very much there there are some other scholars who criticize charles black saying that uh, no no you are forgetting about uh, those things from a marbury case itself structuralism was there but uh, uh, it is uh, named in a new manner and uh, the word structuralism with a uh, definite uh, explanation was uh, given uh, see uh, structuralism Uh, is a uh, very much uh, there in the uh, working of the system as a whole, and uh, preamble has a uh, specific uh, words like a uh, we the people, then a uh, commitment to justice, liberty, equality, fraternity, and national unity. Um, all this uh, actually attract application of a uh, constitutional goals. and the preamble is a, a beautifully drafted uh, set of words and uh, that has a, a structure of its own and that reflects the structure of uh, the constitution as a whole so the very identity of the constitution is uh, something reflected in the preamble itself the uh, structure of uh, the constitution and uh, it's a uh, and the identity is uh, something to be 
properly pursued. But uh, suppose, uh, of course, uh, there is a use of the word structuralism in a uh, one recent case uh, rent, uh, where a judgment was rendered by Justice Deepak Mishra. There is a Shafin Jahan versus uh, Ashokan. Uh, there was a edition in uh, 2018 uh, that uh, there is a Kerala Love Jihad case. See, he makes this observation. Expression of a choice in accordance with the law is acceptance of an individual identity. Curtailment of that expression and ultimate action emanating therefrom on conceptual structuralism of obeisance to social will destroy individualistic entity of a person. See here, Justice Chief Justice Deepak Mishra uses the word structuralism in a different context. Conceptual uh, conceptual structuralism that uh, pays obeisance to the social will of uh, protecting some, some uh, prejudices or customs etc. Actually this is a kind of a deviation. This is not a real structuralism. Uh, let's see, real structuralism consists in proper formulation, appropriate uh, formation of relations. Here, some uh, vestige or some uh, despotic uh, practice uh, in a family or in a society that uh, inter-caste marriage or uh, inter-religious marriages uh, shall be eschewed or shall be avoided. That kind of prejudice is operating and uh, uh, he uses a uh, uh, conceptual structuralism to denote uh, that kind of a deviation. Let's see, uh, when a judges use uh, words, they should be quite careful. Uh, when uh, they use the word structuralism, uh, whether it means uh, the same as that of uh, structuralism which uh, Charles Black and various other scholars uh, so uh, systematically developed in American uh, constitutional literature for the last uh, uh, five or six decades about that uh, they should think but uh, uh, here a uh, uh, bit uh, uh, careless uh, use of word structuralism has uh, caused some confusion see uh, of course Chief uh, Justice Deepak Mishra is a, a very learned man uh, a very learned judge uh, who uh, gave uh, very uh, thought provoking judgments, no doubt. But uh, sometimes the uh, use of words uh, gives rise to some uh, problematic uh, situations. Uh, even uh, uh, the observation of uh, uh, Professor S.P. Saite that uh, structuralism is uh, synonymous with the liberalism or it is uh, synonymous with the, uh, say, uh, progressivism or uh, uh, interpreting the constitution according to the spirit that cannot be regarded as a truly reflecting the structuralism of a, a complex uh, uh, type. I mean, uh, we have to understand the structuralism in its uh, 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 logical manner, and uh, uh, of course, uh, we find that uh, between the part three and part four of the constitution, see what should be the type of relations. Here also structuralism would uh, demand that uh, they should uh, stand on uh, the same footing and uh, part 4 of the constitution should influence part 3. Part 3 of the constitution should gather from uh, part 4 and it should support uh, the goal achievement uh, relating to part 4 etc. Th these are expectations but uh, these expectations uh, did not take place in uh, early cases uh, because uh, uh, in a that the Champakam Dore Rajan case, uh, the direct principles of state policy shall run subordinated to part 3 of the constitution. They shall be subservient to part 3. See, no constitutional part could be regarded as a subordinated to another part unless uh, there is a such a express a statement to that effect. See, uh, part 4 of the constitution is uh, not enforceable. Part 3 is enforceable. See, Sirwai, a positivist thinker, he went to the extent of saying that nothing different would have occurred in the absence of a part 4 of the constitution. See, after several decades of a constitution's functioning, can we agree with the 
uh, HMCY that uh, part 4 is a uh, redundant or it is useless or it uh, did not make any change at all. For each and every positive right, we come across the support from a part 4 of the constitution. Right to environment, right to health, right to education and uh, uh, women's rights. Uh, there is a Vishaka case. So many judgments are based upon part 4, between part 3 and part 4. There is a, not a, uh, such a, uh, a watertight compartments at all. They mix. You see, this is mixing of a policy with the principle. Part 4 of the constitution. Uh, should it be regarded as a policy or a principle? Directive principles or state policy? Is it a policy or a principle? Is it policy or a principle? Principle. Policy. See, Ronald Dworkin in his book uh, Taking Rights Seriously and uh, uh, Matters of a Policy, you know, those are two important books. He uh, makes uh, this kind of analysis. Policy is community's aspiration, it is an expectation, it is a goal or it is an approach. Whereas a principle is a, a norm giving rise to right and obligation. That is a principle. Part 3 is a principle, part 4 is a policy. But a uh, uh, mixing of a policy with the principle, this took place after this uh, famous uh, Chandra Baum case. And in the case one of the cases, uh, such a marvelous uh, development took place uh, where uh, the court recognized that part uh, 3 and part 4 stand on equal footing. See, a uh, far reaching effect uh, can be found when a synergy is brought by reading a part 3 and part 4 together. So uh, they are read, uh, read in an isolated manner. It is not possible to get a uh, synergy of uh, uh, getting all these positive rights and all such things. If the term dignity in the preamble would not have been read into right to life, the position would not have been uh, of uh, this type. That's why we come across uh, that kind of a synergy because of reading. This is the contribution of structuralism. See, greatest contribution of structuralism can be found in a case on that case. See, amendment of the contribution. This is the title of a uh, uh, a particular part. This is a separate part. Whether this can be, whether this isolated part can dominate in a such a way that the identity, structure, and features of other parts of the constitution can be simply dismantled by bringing a constitutional amendment. Whether effacing of the constitution can take place. See, the constitution stands amended accordingly. The constitution shall stand, standing with the whole of these structures, parliamentary form of government, democracy, judicial review, all these structures, separation of powers, all these structures should stand, even after amendment. So, continuity of that structure, even beyond the amendment, is something contemplated. So, see, for this kind of a thinking, the court did not gather it from the heavens. The court gathered support from the text of the uh, article 368, stands amended accordingly. See, uh, that's why uh, some scholars uh, who have uh, uh, elaborated about the structuralism, uh, even Charles Black, they consider that uh, structuralism is an extension of textualism itself. But, uh, 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 it uh, goes beyond the text. It uh, builds up the whole constitutional philosophy on the basis of uh, uh, that uh, holistic understanding. See, uh, there are uh, certain uh, plus points and uh, minuses relating to structuralism. Uh, yes. We find that uh, uh, synergy is one of uh, the important uh, 
a contribution this is the plus factor then uh, mutual assistance and mutual enforcement reinforcement that's also another thing then uh, mutual forbearance and uh, respect for uh, uh, other constitutional entities so that uh, uh, self help structure is somehow uh, could be avoided that is also another factor for example when a uh, one state enacts a law obstructing the right of another state to have access to water in the riparian uh, river then it is a kind of a self help measure thinking that uh, it has a uh, its own structure uh, as a uh, uh, state it has a uh, that kind of a power etc see uh, that is a not a, uh, something appropriate this can be avoided then uh, inter organ controls inter organ controls uh, it has uh, also some positive effect then a uh, purposive character of a uh, power is uh, brought through structural interpretation why power why uh, power of amendment or why legislative power and how it is to exercise within the limits of the constitution about all those things are uh, when a uh, express provisions are there then uh, there is a uh, that kind of a uh, uh, inbuilt uh, structural controls see between a uh, parliamentary privileges and uh, individual freedoms there is a uh, control uh, then a uh, uh, trade uh, yes right to uh, trade commerce and intercourse uh, shall be uh, that shall be absolutely free uh, that shall be free uh that is to be related with the other uh, provisions and uh, there we come across a number of interpretations uh, but uh, specialism has uh, so many minus points also uh, uh, yes minus points uh, you have to be quite careful to avoid such uh, errors uh firstly uh a constitution is a conglomeration of uh, so many uh provisions or so many uh, schemes and by itself it is not holistic if it is not uh, naturally holistic then a uh, application of it in a holistic manner becomes a uh, quite a uh, difficult according to some scholars because it's a conglomeration of so many diverse uh, values or uh, diverse propositions secondly uh, just as the saying goes uh, beauty lies in the uh behold us eyes the judicial perception about the structure goes on changing from a uh, time to time and uh, from a uh, one structure to another structure their perception may also undergo change and uh, uh, of course their uh, uh, resort to such a self help may be quite a problem and another problem is that uh, building relations or networking relations may become a uh, sometimes uncontrolled see if uh, unenumerated uh, rights are uh, built on the basis of uh, such a uh, extended uh, causation sometimes a uh, remote things uh, may also get uh, connected because of such factors i'll give one example see procedure research by law shall be just fair and reasonable after manikal gandhi case that is also product of uh, article 14 and 19 uh, into equity okay and uh, this gives rise to right to legal uh, right to counsel right to counsel and uh, right to counsel will be possible only when a uh, right to legal aid is uh, provided then only right to counsel becomes meaningful and uh, right to have a lawyer becomes a uh, possible when a uh, lawyers are there a uh, lawyers can be there if there are, if there is a good legal education if a uh, excellent legal education like uh, this is there then of course a uh, good lawyers uh, can be uh, issued but uh, when a uh, a uh, good legal education is uh, required it is essential that uh, there should be adequate uh, support to that uh, law college or a legal education center and uh, grant aid from government is uh, providing that kind of uh, assistance that's a uh, right to 
get a government's uh, uh, right to get a grantion aid from government is a part of right to life. See, this is an extended uh, logic, and uh, uh, here we come across uh, some kind of uh, difficulty. And uh, what is the limit up to which we can uh, go on networking? That, that kind of difficulty is there. Of course, uh, if if uh, uh, law colleges need grants in aid, there could be other methods. Uh, let the legislature decide, or uh, uh, in an appropriate uh, appropriation act, let there be adequate measures so that uh, there shall be such thing. But uh, interpreting the constitution in a such a way that a uh, right to get a uh, grant in aid is also part of right to uh, life or uh, it is a component of a procedural bill law becomes a uh, problematic uh, in a uh, such a circumstances uh, yes uh, about uh, the structure within the constitution i have already explained i did not uh, go for that and uh, the story of structuralism is uh, not something uh, 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 say uh, overnight coming from either Keshwananda case or uh, Manika Gandhi case. That uh, development uh, started from the very beginning of uh, the uh, constitution itself. Then structuralism. Uh, is a uh, federalism. Uh, here we come across uh, uh, the approach of uh, the constitution makers uh, to provide for uh, uh, the uh, relations between the federal government and the state government. How exactly structural, structuralism has helped? See, structuralism in the context of federalism has uh, reinforced the idea of supremacy of federal government itself or a strong center is a, the core idea of a, the Indian constitution and the judiciary in interpreting the provisions relating to federalism applied the structuralism in a such a way that it has a upheld national supremacy by and large by and large national supremacy is a something supported see related to formation of the states uh, as you are aware uh, the consent of uh, states is not required the parliament can impose any number of states or it can delete it can uh, change the political map according to its uh, liking uh, but uh, here also the overall political structure of the society is uh, the limit upon the parliament's uh, power to make such a changes because uh, during the last 70 years uh, linguistic organization of states or uh, uh, ethnic organization of states or uh, organization, organization of state on the basis of uh, uh, say economic uh, empowerment uh, these uh, types of criteria have been adopted thus uh, Formation of states has not taken place in a haphazard manner. And there are inbuilt controls. That's why, while the constitution is a standing for a specific structure, beyond that, there is a the social structure or the political structure with which the constitution shall be connected. See, when a overarching of a structures is contemplated within the constitution, overarching of a structure within the constitution and outside the constitution can also be contemplated uh, see uh, Charles Black goes to the extent of saying that even in the absence of a first amendment to the American constitution it is uh, possible to claim freedom of speech and expression just on the basis of uh, the idea of a democracy if idea of a democracy is there then all these things are uh, implicit they, they, there, uh, there will be such a proposition in the same way, here also, so many uh, such relations are, are there. Uh, in uh, interpreting all these uh, provisions relating to uh, formation of states, in a Babulal Parade case, or in a, that Hari, Haridwar case, or in uh, so many other cases, uh, the interpretation has uh, gone in a, such a way that supremacy of uh, the federal government is uh, something emphasized. Then, uh, 
state representation in a parliament uh, see uh, structuralism uh, requires that no uh, federalism requires that the representatives uh, to the second chamber should be from that state that is uh, the constitutional contemplation in almost all federal systems but uh, so the indian constitution provides for a deviation from that of course up to kuldeep singh case uh, kuldeep nayar case up to kuldeep nayar there was a uh, some belief that uh, the concerned person uh, should have uh, been the voter in the voting list in the local list of uh, that state that way artificially marmon singh got some uh, uh voting right in assam and such a th things artificially got me but in a kuldeep nayar case the court stated that there is no such thing uh, anybody can contest from anywhere so uh, from uh, karnataka we have representatives like a uh, 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 nirmala sitaraman and others uh, uh, yes strictly speaking from the federalism perspective that is not uh, appropriate uh, but uh, uh the court uh, uh, in the name of our structuralism uh, upholds a federal supremacy in this way then a uh, judicial mindset uh, in favor of a legislative competence can be found uh, of course uh, the legislative relations are, are uh, so formulated that a uh, supremacy of uh, the central government or state government is uh, something uh, in built there and in interpreting also the judiciary has a uh, 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 approach it from uh, that perspective then uh, whether it's related to harmonious interpretation or uh, interpretation of entries there also structuralism has a uh, played its own role see relating to interpretation of entries uh, the principle is that each entry shall be given a uh, uh, a very liberal interpretation but in in so far as a uh, federal government is concerned or a union government is concerned there are number of entries 97 entries in the first list and so many entries in the concurrent list so uh, when a uh, elaborate interpretation of uh, that is uh, possible actually the beneficiary is uh, the federal government then uh, uh, there are some cases where uh, uh, recently uh, in interpreting the provisions related to federalism the state right theory of federalism is uh, to some extent uh, recognized Uh, for example uh, the uh, in the uh, itc case there's a tobacco company case 2 uh, uh, there the court overruled its earlier judgment and held that the state government has uh, the power of regulating some of the activities relating to uh, uh, say growth of tobacco tobacco see about the sale of tobacco when uh, the federal government has a uh, uh, power about the uh, 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 growth of uh, the crop of tobacco or regulation of it etc actually state government has the powers uh, see uh, then we come across uh, structuralism's uh, handling of uh, the uh, theory of separation of powers uh, that is quite elaborate i am not in a position to discuss elaborately on uh, those aspect but uh, uh, you can go through Uh, the writings on uh, separation of powers, uh, but uh, that has uh, provided uh, a very useful uh, uh, resource for a uh, uh, constitutional interpretation. Then we come across a uh, uh, structuralism and intra-organ controls. See, there are uh, between uh, the House of Commons and uh, uh, House of Lords. There is a such a relation that uh, House of Commons uh, prevails over uh, the House of Lords. Uh, related to money bill in a very recent judgment the supreme court uh, viewed that the uh, speaker's uh, decision about the uh, identification of a particular bill as a money bill is a final uh, but uh, if the uh, a certification is uh, not appropriate in a particular circumstance because of a uh, so many factors other than uh, monetary factors that uh, the court may interfere see whether a uh, money bill whether a particular bill is a money bill or not 
is uh, something important because how so people get uh, superior powers over uh, the Rajya Sabha in such a circumstance. So inter organ controls are to be taken into consideration there. Then uh, structuralism, the domain of fundamental rights, which I have discussed in the course of uh, my uh, discussion. Then uh, overarching of uh, structures, that is uh, something uh, that is to be neatly developed in the future. Because uh, so far, structuralism has not been developed in a systematic manner. And even judiciary has also not used the word structuralism. For us, uh, uh, the idea that uh, judiciary should not subscribe to any of the theories might have made it to hesitant about uh, uh, recognizing structuralism as one of the principles of interpretation. Because uh, uh, judiciary is scared about these isms, whether it's a structuralism, communism, or any other ism. That about isms, uh, it is a bit of scare. That we need to avoid. Uh, federalism and uh, uh, human rights, then democracy and human rights, uh, then uh, trade and commerce. In, in all these spheres, uh, we come across uh, that uh, uh, scope for structural interpretation. Uh, see, structuralism does not substitute uh, other uh, methods of constitutional interpretation. See, gathering support from a constant assembly debates gathering support from original intention or a gathering support from a, the spirit of the constitution of progressivism etc. That is a, not a, something uh, opposed by structuralism. Uh, there is an eclectic uh, interpretation of the constitution. Uh, there is a gathering uh, good of uh, all uh, approaches. That is eclecticism. Uh, that type of uh, approach uh, is uh, something uh, compatible with the structuralism. Structuralism is uh, flexible. Uh, it uh, accommodates uh, these types of things, but, but uh, it has a great contribution to both the uh, rights of jurisprudence and, uh, and uh, the phenomenon of uh, power control. Whether it's a suppression of powers approach or a division of powers approach, it is a structuralism which has uh, provided uh, some uh, guidance. Uh, this is about uh, the growing importance of structuralism in the constitutional interpretation. There is a, uh, although it is uh, so important and it is uh, overwhelming you know, a whole of uh, the constitutional jurisprudence. Uh, there is a lack of a clarity about the uh, uh, structuralism as an approach. It is essential to have a systematic understanding of uh, structuralism because uh, the identity of the constitution, identity of those structures can be properly uh, be asserted only on the basis of a uh, proper use of uh, structuralism. With this, uh, uh, I am concluding. Uh, I'm, uh, Thanking uh, Professor uh, Yaksu Brahmanya for uh, giving a uh, 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 very valuable opportunity to my to make a presentation uh, in this uh, national seminar on uh, these uh, trends in a competition. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you. I'm, uh, I'm happy that uh, uh, one of our uh, constitutional jurists, very eminent constitutional jurist, is uh, present and. Uh, uh, yes, before him, I am uh, making a presentation. I am not going to be here. Thank you. Thank you.